Welcome to episode 27 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today, I am showing you how I convert images or photos into paintings. This can include watercolor paintings, oil paintings, or digital paintings. I combine different techniques to have more control over the output, allowing it to be either similar to the original image or more creative. If you followed my episode so far, you should already have everything you need except for a few small LoRa models. For those who don't have all these models, I will include links in the description of the video. I'm using an SDXL model, and you can see where to save it. Then I'll show a few Loris I've tested, a control net model, and an upscaler model. There are also only three custom nodes, which you probably already have. Let's get started. I am using the Juggernaut XL model, uh, version 10, or version X. It is an SDXL model, but it should work with any SDXL model you have. First, download this model, then go to the Comfy UI folder, then the Models folder, and look for the Checkpoints folder to place it there. As for the Loras, they are not very large, so you can download them and test to see which style you like. They need to be base SDXL to be compatible with SDXL. You can search for other Lora styles on Civit AI and replace them in my workflow. Each Lora has a trigger word or more that you need to add to your prompt. For example, I will test another Lora with a mix of oil painting and watercolor using different trigger words, but the same SDXL base model. Then I have one Laura in the impressionist oil painting style, another for digital painting and another for classic oil painting. So download the Laura or any other Laura styles you like for the SDXL base model and place them in the Loris folder inside the models folder. As you can see, I have a bunch of them you can create an SDXL folder and place them there to make them easier to find. Next, we have the Union Control Net model, the Pro Max version. Download this and place it inside the Control Net folder. The last model is the Upscale model, the CX model. Download this and place it in the Upscale Models folder. For custom nodes, go to the Manager and then to the Custom Nodes Manager and install the Was Node Suite. We use this node in a few episodes with the art styles, then install the Comfy UI Easy Use node. The last one is the Control Net Auxiliary, which lets us use different preprocessors. After installing everything, restart Comfy UI. That's all you need. The workflows are free to download from the Discord server, but I will explain the basics of what I did. So let's start with this watercolor workflow. All the workflows for other painting styles are the same. The only difference is the LoRa, trigger words, and possibly some settings adjustments. I split the workflow into two groups. The first part is where you generate or get a painting from an image. Once you're happy with the result, you enable the second part, which will upscale the image, giving you a 4x upscale of the original generation from the first group. So the workflow allows you to upload your own image and get a variation of that image in the watercolor painting style. For example, if you modify the prompt and ask for snow and purple sunset when you run the workflow, you'll get a variation of that image in watercolor style. Let's start from the beginning so it all makes sense. We start with the load checkpoint node because the entire model is based on this SDXL model. So add this model or your own SDXL model here. Next, we have the watercolor LoRa, which you can load using either the load LoRa node or the Power LoRa Loader node. The strength setting adjusts the power of the LoRa. If it's too strong, you can reduce it to 0.8 or 0.5. Play around with these settings. Then we have the positive and negative prompts. I split the positive prompt into two parts because I wanted to add the LoRa trigger word separately, making it easier to modify the prompt. Both text parts are combined using the text concatenate node, and then it goes to the text encoder, where you usually place the prompt. I've added the trigger words, the positive prompt, and the negative prompt, which all go to the K sampler. However, it's first controlled by the control net model. I loaded a snowman image here, and to avoid having images that are too big or too small, I used a node to scale the image to a one megapixel size. This ensures it works well with stable diffusion and is not too big for the latent space of the K sampler. I also ran this image through a preprocessor specifically the Any Line Art preprocessor. I even included a preview so you can see what it does. This prepares the image in a way that the ControlNet model can understand. 
You can experiment with different preprocessors depending on the results you want to preserve. For instance, using depth gives you the depth of the image but might lose some lines and details, like the position of the snowman's buttons. Canny is another good one, so try various preprocessors until you get the result you're looking for. What works for one image might not work for another, so it depends on the image you upload. For the control net model, I am using the Promax model. In the apply control net node, you can control the strength of control net. Sometimes I reduce it to 0.8 if it's too strong. There's also an N% percent setting, which controls when you want to end the influence of control net. If you don't want the result to be exactly identical to the input, you can reduce this value, allowing the AI to be more creative. For denoise, if you want the result to be more similar to the uploaded image, reduce the denoise. If you want it to be more creative, increase it. When I reduce the control net strength to 0.8, you can see that it gives the AI a bit more freedom. I prefer using a fixed seed, so if I run the workflow without changing anything, nothing happens. However, if I change the seed number manually, I get a different result for that seed. But if I try to run it again without changing anything, nothing will change. Using a fixed seed makes it easier to go back to the previous result if needed, but that's not the main reason I use a fixed seed, which I'll explain in a minute. If I reduce the N% percent value, control net's influence ends faster, giving the AI more room to be creative. This can also be useful for getting subtle variations. For example, if you like what you see, but the hand doesn't look right, you can make another version with a subtle variation of the same seed. At full strength, with this preprocessor, you can see dots on the snowman because those details were captured from the original image. If you don't want those visible, try using canny or reduce the strength or N% percent of control net. Regarding denoise, if I reduce it, I get something similar to the original image with subtle changes, but as I increase the value, I get more of that watercolor look. For objects and scenes, you can go really high with denoise, but for portraits, it doesn't always work. In those cases, you usually need to keep the value low to stay closer to the original. Without using Allura, it's harder to keep a face consistent. So that covers the first part, generation. As you can see, you can adjust various settings and try different combinations until you get something similar to what you want. It's not perfect, but it does the job. Let's say you're happy with this painting and now you need a higher quality image. You can now enable the second part of the workflow, the upscale. You just use the switch to enable or disable upscaling. Once it's enabled, you can run the workflow and guess what? It starts with the upscale because we used a fixed seed. This means it doesn't need to generate the image again as it already created it before. So it just continues with the upscaling. More details about upscaling will be covered in episode 12, but in short, what it does is use the CX upscaler model to double the image size. Then it goes back to the K sampler with low denoise, and we get an image that's twice the size of the original. After that, the image is saved. I then use only the upscaler model for the second time to upscale the image again, doubling its size, so the final image is four times larger than the original. As you can see, I can zoom out a lot and the image is still sharp, and you can also see the watercolor paper texture the previous version with 2x upscaling isn't as sharp, but both images are saved in the output folder, so you can choose whichever one you prefer. If the upscaler produces any mistakes, simply run it again. It will only run the upscaling with a different seed, and you can also adjust the denoise to have more control over the final result. I opened another workflow for retro painting mix using this image of the robot. The rest of the workflow is the same, but now we have a different LoRa and, of course, different trigger words. For the prompt, I wanted to transform the robot into an old, rusty oil painting. So when I run the workflow, I get this rusty robot painting. It's great that we can maintain the composition with ControlNet and still use the prompt to change the image. Then, we can enable the upscale and run the workflow. So it continues with that image and makes it larger. This is the final result. It's quite fast because it runs with SDXL and the quality is acceptable. Run the workflow or upscale a few times until you get a result that works for you. Moving on to the next workflow, I have this portrait of a woman and the workflow transforms images into oil paintings. I have this Laura and these trigger words. 
Now with this one, it's a bit of a hit and miss because the face is hard to keep consistent without using a LoRa model specifically trained for that face. I added a simple prompt for the woman. Then for denoise, I set a really small value like 0.25 to maintain the original features while still allowing some room for the oil painting style to take effect. The result is this. The image is almost the same, but if you zoom in a little, you can see the subtle painting effect. Now, if I enable the upscaling and run the workflow, the painting effect becomes even more pronounced because it goes through the second K sampler, and the result is this. While it's not the best oil painting, you can see the oil painting effect starting to show. Without a Laura specifically trained for that face, it's hard to keep the face consistent. Let me show you what happens if I increase the denoise to give it more freedom. The woman no longer looks exactly like the original, more like a sister of the original, but the painting effect is much more noticeable now. You can see the brush strokes even in the background. The upscaled version looks even better. In my opinion, this workflow works best for objects, scenes, and animals. It's not as effective for people if you want to keep the face consistent. You can keep the face, but you'll lose some of the painting effect. Let's test with a different image, like this landscape image, for example. For the prompt, I'll just add a cottage and run the workflow. Using this preprocessor, it captured a lot of details, but you can try other preprocessors if you don't want all those details to be kept. Because I used high denoise, I got this version of the oil painting. If I increase the strength of control net, it will restrict things further. So the contours from the original image will appear in the generation as well, making it more accurate. However, that nice brush stroke effect might not be as visible. So it's always about finding a balance between different settings. If I reduce the end percent, I give it more freedom again, and now it has that old painting look. If I reduce it even more, it becomes more creative. I kind of like this version. Let me enable the upscaler to see how it looks at a larger size. Well, it looks kind of nice. Seen from a distance, it's almost like an original painting. Now, let's test another workflow, this time for Impressionism oil painting. You can see I have a different Laura here, along with the trigger words. And for the painting, I wanted a cat sitting on a pink pillow. I got this nice painting effect. If I enable the upscale and run it, I get the larger version. I noticed that this Laura doesn't make images as sharp, probably because it was trained on old paintings, which tend to have softer details, but I really like the painterly look it creates. So with this workflow, you can create an oil painting of your pet. For the last workflow, I have this knight and a digital painting Laura with a simple prompt of a knight in front of a castle. This is the digital painting result. It has that digital art look with brush strokes, and it would take hours to create a painting like this in Photoshop, but now you can achieve it in just a few seconds. If I change the lighting, like adding red in the prompt, it influences the mood of the painting. You can play with colors and the prompt to make the image more interesting. For example, if I change the prompt to purple, I get this version. Since it's the same seed, it shares many similarities with the previous generation, but with different lighting. So remember to play with the settings, change the LoRa strength, or adjust the control net strength. You can increase or decrease the denoise value, change the preprocessor, there are endless possibilities. For example, if I change the preprocessor to depth, even with the same seed and settings, the result is different. It's not as constrained by the edges, so you get more depth in the image. That's all for today. Thank you all for supporting the channel, and a special thanks to the Legends, VIPs, and everyone who joined the membership. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment to help the channel grow, so I can create more videos for you. Have a great day, and I'll see you on Discord.